my name's Will. These are my partners, Kiera and Sona, and our senior design project is Soul 3D, which is a 3D printed embedded in-sole sensor. The problem we're addressing with our technology is walking impairments and the millions of Americans who are affected by them today. We define walking impairments as any sort of reduction in mobility that can be caused by a number of disorders, such as ataxia, Parkinson's, arthritis, diabetes, hip replacements, and many more disorders. The unfortunate fact is that 20 million Americans today are affected by walking impairments, which is a huge problem not only because of the scope and healthcare costs, but also because of the dramatic reduction in quality of life that these individuals face. Despite knowing all this, the pathway to treatment for these patients can be quite complex. Before being treated, walking impairments need to be characterized and diagnosed, which isn't easy because of the wide variance in symptoms. Most clinicians will use weight distribution on the feet as a way to characterize these disorders. This can be done in a static manner, as seen here where the patient will just stand on a scale, or it could also be done in a dynamic manner using technology such as the gate right walkway seen here. Once data is collected, patients can then move on to some form of treatment such as physical therapy. However, a major disadvantage with this process is that data collection cannot be transferred outside of the clinician's office. This means that patients have no way of getting feedback on how the treatment is affecting their unique walking impairment. This brings me to our Envision solution, Soul 3 d Soul 3 d would be a shoe insole sensor that actively measures weight distribution throughout the day. The key idea here is that patients would get real-time, continuous feedback during their treatment, painting a much more complete picture of how their treatment is affecting their walking disorder. Our goal throughout the year was to create a material that could be used for this product. This, mater this material is a conductive polymer, giving it the flexibility and porosity of a real shoe insole, as well as enabling it to act as a piezo-resistive sensor. What this means is that forces applied to this material cause localized conductivity changes. These changes can then be used to create a weight distribution map. We also wanted to 3D print this material. This allowed us to create complex geometries and would allow for the future product to be customized to individual feet and unique walking impairments. You see this trend of 3D printing shoes in companies today like New Balance and Adidas as well. Now I'm gonna hand it off to Sona who will talk about how we developed our material. Thank you, Will. Developing the material for Soul 3 d required many iterations, which you can see in the samples that we're passing out. Feel free to take them out of their boxes and to play with them as you wish. This process started with our material selection. We then modified the relative amounts of these materials to find our ideal resin composition for 3D printing. In parallel, we 3D printed various structures to try and find the ideal geometry for our sensors. After making each sample, we would then test its printability and its conductivity and mechanical properties. Uh, once we made each sample and tested them, we would then alter the resin composition and geometry accordingly. And after going through this feedback loop many times, we found the ideal composition and geometry for our shoe insole sensors. Looking, with, looking back at our material selection, we needed to pick a polymer matrix and a filler to make it conductive. For a polymer matrix, we chose PDMS because it was flexible and deformable enough for our application. For a conductive filler, we chose carbon black. These are spherical particles that, in a high enough concentration, can make an insulating polymer conductive. We chose carbon black over other conductive fillers, such as carbon nanowires or nanotubes, because it's isotropic. This means that its conductivity will be the same in all directions, so that the orientation of the sensor or the direction we print it in does not matter. To find the actual composition of our resin, we required finding a delicate balance between three components. We use two different kinds of PDMS. The first, Silgard 184, thins the resin enough so that it can actually be extruded during printing. The second, SC1700, thickens the resin so that it holds its structure after we print it. The final component, Carbon Black, both provides conductivity and thickens the resin. After making dozens of samples, we eventually found our final composition. This included about 15.75 weight percent carbon black. For our sensor geometry, we considered various patterns, such as honeycomb and triangular. In the end, we chose the rectilinear pattern. When printed, the rectilinear pattern results in a grid-like structure, as shown on the right. This grid-like sensor 
is the most flexible and deformable out of the other, all the geometries we considered, which makes it the most suitable for our chosen application. When looking at printability, we, the factors we were looking at was that the material was shear thinning, such that it can be extruded without clogging, and it's viscous enough to hold its structure after printing. As you can see in this video, by optimizing the printability factor, we were able to make a resin that could be printed relatively easily, accurately, and precisely. Finally, we looked at the conductivity of our samples. We needed to determine the percolation threshold. This means the percolation threshold is the weight percent of carbon black at which the PDMS will become conductive. We did this by making many samples with different car carbon black contents, as shown on the right. With conductivity on the y-axis and carbon black content on the x-axis, you can see that with increasing carbon black content, you have higher conductivity. Through this process, we found that our percolation threshold was at about 15 weight percent carbon black. Since our resin composition, it has about roughly 16 weight percent carbon black, as shown by this uh, orange line, our uh, composition is great, has a high conductivity greater than the percolation threshold, which means that it will be more than conductive enough for our chosen application. So after going through this feedback loop at least 20 times, uh, we were able to get to the composition and geometry that we could use to make our embedded insole sensors, which Kira will talk about. So we were able to use our conductive composite material as a sensor because it's piezo-resistive, which, as Will mentioned earlier, means that as the material is deformed, the conductivity changes. This is because the PDMS matrix, as it is pulled apart, the carbon black particles within move around and either increase or decrease their contact with each other, changing the overall conductivity of the material. We measured this change in conductivity by loading our sample into an instron and putting conductivity probes on the top and bottom. We then simultaneously stretched our material and measured the resistance across the sample and used the changing dimensions in order to plot the change in conductivity versus strain. With the change in conductivity on the y-axis and actually strain on the x-axis, you can see that there is a clear change in conductivity with strain confirming the piezo-resistivity of our material. For our sensors, we use this change in conductivity in order to determine the applied load as someone stands or walks. We tested the feasibility of our sensor with an Arduino. We attached our sensor here and measured the change in voltage across the sample. With the change in voltage, we then calculated the resistance, and as pressure was applied and the resistance changed, we used the change in conductivity in order to detect the applied load. You can see here the resistance and the load, and as the load is applied, our sensor does read a change in the load, confirming that our material does work as a sensor. Our next step was to scale our single sensor into a larger array. This enabled us to get more localized data on where the force is being applied. Here we have four carbon black sensors in an overall non-conductive PDMS matrix. Each of these sensors acts as a pixel for a force distribution map. This means that as we increase the number of sensors and decrease their size, we get better resolution and can one day end up with a pressure distribution map that would look like this. Looking back at our array, one of the huge advantages of 3D printing this material is that we were able to simultaneously print both the conductive and non-conductive material. This means that when manufacturing our insoles, we can embed our conductive material into the insole with only one manufacturing step. Another huge advantage of 3D printing is that it allows the insoles to be customized for each individual and their walking impairment. Each person's foot has different pressure areas, and with our material, we can increase the number of sensors in these pressure areas to get better readings, and we can also increase the stiffness of them to provide better support for their feet. To wrap it all up, we created a printable conductive composite that we then printed into a piezo-resistive sensor. Next, we demonstrated that it could be scaled up into a larger array in order to make a pressure distribution map, and we confirmed that we were able to get an accurate load reading with our sensor. With our technology, we will be able to improve the treatments and quality of life of the 20 million Americans affected by walking impairments. We created a new materials system in order to get real-time weight distribution measurements. And while we applied this to shoe insoles, 
It could also be applied in many other areas, such as in seat cushions to measure ergonomics or posture, or in items like football helmets in order to measure concussion forces. We d demonstrated proof of concept that this is feasible, and we're actually looking into getting a patent for our material right now. There are many people we'd like to acknowledge with our project. First and foremost, our technical advisor, Dr. Rainey, and everyone in the Rainey Lab for helping us out throughout this year. We would also like to thank Steve and LRSM for helping us with all of our testing, uh, Dr. Chan for guiding us throughout this process, Vicky for all of our support and love, and finally, Emeris Graphite and Carbon at ASCO Nobel for providing us with Carbon Black. Thank you, and we'll take any questions. Yeah, so part of that is um, our electrical engineering and programmability is not to the level that we would need to actually develop it into an app. Um, but we imagine that you could put essentially a Bluetooth device in like the heel of your shoe, um, and you can actually use our material for the wiring in that as well, and then it could go to like an app on your phone so you could get real-time data. And I also just like to emphasize the time-consuming nature of developing a new material. Um, even if we had the skills, I think the timeline is very, very tight for us to do that. That said, I think if someone would take time in a few months, that extra steps could be done. I wanted to kind of comment that question. How many don't bother with the helmet stuff? The NFL really knows how to calculate that thing or whatever. I'm curious if there's a company that produced that and they didn't want to know. Now, the military, I think, there is. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's one huge area that we were sort of looking into. Um, it gets a lot more complex because for different sports you have different needs. Uh, but especially in today how obsessed we are with constant data, that's one thing that this technology could be used for. Um, and it can go stuff like for your running as far as running style. It can also minimize injury risk because um, like ACL tears, if for women especially, if like our weight's too far on the inside, we could use our technology to try and correct that in real time, yeah. And runners as well also have a sort of rudimentary way of looking at their weight distribution already. In long-term running sneakers, you see one side will like start to wear on the bottom, and coaches will use that actually to try to correct their runner's form, so it could definitely be ap applicable. Yeah. Mm. Oh, definitely. And uh, maybe there's a lot of iterations, but do you have a chance to do any um, longevity testing, wear testing, how long the material lasts? For our mechanical testing, we did do mini cycles um, straining the material to measure the conductivity there, and there wasn't a big change in that, but that is one concern for people who wear shoes for years. Um, luckily, with insoles, a lot of times, for the application that this is, you would get, new, new, you get newer shoes more often um, if you have walking impairments anyways. So, so the, the carbon black and the polymer, they come together as a powder? So the carbon black comes as a powder. The polymer is more of a sticky substance, and we mix those together. And that's, that's injection into, into the machine. That yes. Deposit. So yes. how do you yeah. guarantee that you've got the, com the, the, the homogeneous facility? So that it's like you had 18% for the one. How do you guarantee that you've got that percentage across the whole thing? Right, and so the way we did that is through the actual mixing equipment that we used. We used a vacuum mixer that mixed our, sen um, our samples at anywhere between 1,000 to 2,000 revolutions per minute, and it's that precise such that we know that it's evenly distributed throughout. And, not, and we also did conductivity testing at different points, and it seemed to have been the same throughout, so. For like, uh, for like heavy machine industry, mm -hmm. this, this material could be used in like gas Guarantee, you know, forces and when it would potentially fail in advance of the Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.